hi everyone in this video i'm going to explain about the measurement of q or quality factor of a cavity resonator so we know what is the cavity resonator cavity resonator is nothing but made up of a complete closed path a normal waveguide we will consider and which is closed on either ends then the wave which enters into the resonator cavity resonator that uh, um, moves towards to and fro number of times so that it will be having number of reflections that creates resonance so this is what we have seen in the case of cavity resonator now though there are different types of methods we are having for the measurement of this q for the cavity resonator what are the different methods we are having so there are there are three methods available for the measurement of q of a cavity resonator first one transmission method transmission method second one impedance method impedance method and third one transient transient decay or decrement method decrement method transient decay or decrement method so these are the three methods available for the measurement of q of any cavity resonator so the earliest and most followed method is always the transmission method transmission method is the oldest and the best method to calculate this q of a transmission uh, q of a resonant cavity resonator okay now i will explain and we will completely study about this transmission method so the transmission method is having a setup like this transmission method is having a setup been setup like this a microwave source followed by attenuator followed by cavity resonator cavity resonator is the one which is the we can call it as the device under test for which we are going to calculate the q quality factor so the output of this one is again given to detector followed by power indicator okay power indicator we can call it as either vsw meter or power indicator so in this method the cavity resonator acts as a device that acts as transmits okay it is a transmitter it transmits the signal it transmits the em signal okay so this method the cavity resonator acts as a device that it transmits the output signal is plotted here as a function of frequency which results a resonant curve see here this is the output of the cavity resonator cavity resonator we know when the signal enters into the cavity resonator it uh, takes multiple paths and produces a resonance that resonance is having a frequency fr at particular resonant frequency it will be having the maximum amplitude okay we know the resonant frequency is nothing but the frequency where you are having the reactance is equal that means the capacitive reactance is equal to inductive reactance that where we are having the maximum amplitude maximum gain see here the power output is maximum okay and uh, if you are going away uh, and below above and below this one your amplitude goes down okay now this point is nothing but two here two delta is nothing but the bandwidth bandwidth is taken below this 3 db okay that's why under minus 3 db it will be shown as bandwidth with the 2 db okay so from this step the signal frequency of the microwave source is varied a signal frequency is going to be varied keeping the signal level constant and then the output power is measured so the cavity resonator is tuned to this frequency like whatever we have shown here the cavity resonator is tuned to this frequency and the signal level 
and the output power is again noted down to notice the difference okay signal level and the output power these two are noted down to note notice the difference so when the output is plotted the resonance curve is obtained when the output is plotted when the output is plotted the resonance curve is obtained the resonance curve is obtained resonance curve is obtained from which we can notice from which we can notice the half power half power bandwidth half power bandwidth hp b w half power bandwidth which is a 2 delta from the figure so 2 delta which can be expressed as 2 delta is equal to plus or minus 1 by q l 1 by q l q l is the loaded value where q l is the loaded value okay so or we can say q l is equal to plus or minus 1 by 2 delta just reciprocal of this one that is equal to plus or minus omega by 2 into omega minus omega naught so if the coupling between the microwave source and the cavity as well as the coupling between the detector and the cavity are neglected then q l becomes q naught if the coupling between the microwave source and the cavity microwave source and the cavity as well as the coupling between detector and the cavity detector and cavity are neglected neglected then then q l is equal to q naught which is unloaded q which is nothing but unloaded q this is what the resonance okay resonance is nothing but it is the situation where the uh, reactances of the circuit are equal okay reactances of this transmission line are equal in general what we say if you are having any electronic circuit there your electrical circuit there you are having a inductive as well as capacitive reactances at one particular frequency at one particular frequency you are having the resonance condition that is nothing but where uh, you will be having the reactive component is equal to the reactive component of capacitance is equal to reactive component of the inductance that is the situation where you are having this uh, uh, resonant condition okay so here also the same situation occurs so, so that's why the loaded QL is equal to unloaded Q naught what is the drawback of this method drawback of this method is the main drawback of this system is that the accuracy is a bit poor in very high quality factor systems very high Q systems due to narrow band of operation so the main drawback of main drawback of this method the act is the accuracy is a bit poor is a bit poor in very
IQ systems due to narrow band of operation narrow band of operation okay so this is the main drawback of this system and this is the operation and the method how to measure the quality factor of this transmission line thank you